In today's video, you are going to learn how to scrape leads from Google Maps in 2024 with a freemium web scraping tool named Octopus. I have done the same video a year ago, but all four big principles remain the same. The video is in overall outdated. It's time for a quick recap. The link to download Octopus is in the description. Unfortunately, this tutorial has two limitations. First, you can scrape phone numbers, but not email addresses. Secondly, you can only scrape 120 companies per search. If you want to scrape Google Maps at scale with emails, I suggest you to use Scrap.io. Thanks to it, you can get your CSV or Excel file within a couple of clicks. You can also find the link in the description. So ladies and gentlemen, we are going to scrape restaurants at Dublin. Please note that this tutorial will only work if you have selected English United States as a language. If you want to change your language, you click on here, language, and you select English United States. I mean, it will work as well if you have selected another language. But the point is that this video will be based on a lot of formulas. You can find them all in the description. These formulas are called XPaths. I've made an entire video about the topic, but there are two things to remember related to XPaths. The first one is that XPaths are really powerful because they help you to scrape your data in a more accurate way. But the second thing is that XPaths can change over time. So if these XPaths are no longer valid, that's fine, you can still take a look at my video and write your own, or you can do a point on click. We will see how to do that in the video as well. All right, so here is your URL, restaurants at Dublin. Obviously, you can choose another research if you want to. I copy my URL, I jump into Octopus, I paste it here on the home page, and I click on start. I will get my task. The first thing I have to do is to remove this pop-up because I don't have access to Google Maps, not yet. What I have to do is to turn on the browse mode. I will change the language to English and I click on reject all. There we go. As I've said for the example, I will change my language to English. And to make sure that the pop-up won't appear anymore, I have to save the cookies. Therefore, I go to options, use cookie, use cookie from the current page, and I click on apply. The only thing that will not change is the language, but that's fine, we will manage it afterwards. And let's start creating our task. What we have to do first, what we have to do is to scroll down to the bottom of the page as many times as possible, because we've got like three, maybe five elements so far, but if I scroll down again and again and again, we can get up to 120 companies. Why 120 companies and not more? It's simply due to a Google Maps limitation. There is something interesting as well, is that we have to scroll down to the bottom of the page for this specific part of the screen only and not as a main page. We will have to take it into account as well. Let's come back to Octopus and I create another element. I add a step. What do I have to add? A loop. I add a loop. I click on my loop. I will rename it scroll. And as a loop mode, I select scroll page. The scroll area, I can choose between default and partial. What have we said previously? We want to get a partial scroll area this part only. And I have to select my XPath. If the XPath is no longer valid, you can do a point on click, meaning you do something like this. This part is pretty hard to do for the scroll area, so it might be better to write the XPath for that one. I have my formula, I copy, I paste it here, I click on apply, I scroll down a little bit more, 
and I can choose from scrolling to the bottom of the page or for one screen, meaning one screen at a time. I suggest you to select for one screen, even through to the bottom of the page can work to some extent. And I repeat the scrolling process a thousand times. I do not care as long as I keep this box checked. I end the loop when there is no more content to load. And as a waiting time, three seconds is good. I click on apply and I'm going to test whether my scrolling process works or if there is any mistake I have to correct. I click on run, standard mode, and we will take a look. I click on pause because I have to change my language. I click on here, language, and English. I click on zero and I can resume. If I click on show browser, let's see. See, the scrolling process works fine. So I can stop my task and then once we have reached the bottom of the page, we can select all elements at once. I will add another step, another loop, but this time this will be a loop item. As a loop mode, I select the variable list because I have a list of items and it is a variable list, as simple as that. Same thing as before, I can do a point and click, but I do not like this way. I've got my XPath, I paste it here, I click on apply, I click on a blank space and I click on my loop item one more time in order to see if everything works fine. So far I've got four items, that's okay because we didn't scroll down to the bottom of the page yet. I go to options and I will wait for one second. Okay, what do we have to do now? We have to click on each item in order to extract data from the detailed pages. In other words, we have to do something like this. I click on the first element. I extract data from this element. Then I click on the second element. It will automatically be done thanks to our loop item. Then to the third, then to the fourth, you get the idea. So I add a step and I add a click item element. I select relative XPath to the loop item because my XPath ends with an A tag and an A tag in an HTML document implies a URL. So I click on each URL relative to each element. I go to options and I wait for one second each time and I load the page with Ajax. I add a 10 seconds timeout. It's only a maximum. If the page is loaded before 10 seconds, it will scrape the data right away. I click on apply. And to see if that works, I click on loop item and on click item. It does work. As you can see, it's displayed in another way, but it doesn't matter because at the end, we will get this layout. All right, we can extract our data now. I add a step and I add an extract data step. I will wait for seven seconds. I click on apply. And what are we going to extract? The first thing I'm going to extract is the URL of the page. So I click on that custom field, page level data and page URL. I uncheck extract data in the loop. I click on apply in order to see my URL. What do we have next? The title, the ratings, the number of reviews, the categories, the address, the website, the phone numbers, the photos, the number of photos and the opening hours. I'm going to show you how to do it for the first one and we will do the opening hours together at the end because this one is really interesting. How can I extract my title? Same thing as before, I can do a point and click just like this, or you can click on add custom field, capture data on the page. I give a name to my colon, I click on absolute XPath and I paste my XPath. I click on confirm and I've got my title. Something which is good to do as well, it's not mandatory, is to remove any white spaces before and after the text. Sometimes there are, sometimes there aren't, 
So just in case, it's better to remove them. I click on Clean Data, Add Step and Trim Spaces. Trim both, Confirm and Apply. I'm going to redo the same process for the ratings, the reviews, the categories, the address, the website, the phone number, the number of photos, and I see you back once it's over. As promised, we will now take a look at how to scrape the opening hours. This part might sound a bit difficult, particularly if it is the first time you have ever heard of web scraping, so I will try to explain it in simple terms. I am on Google Chrome, which means I can use a Google Chrome extension called XPath Helper. It's a free one, I click on it, and the X path to scrape the opening hours is that one. Of course, you can pick up another one if you want to, but in my opinion, it might be the best one. And I'm going to explain it to you in a minute. I copy it, I paste it. I've got zero results. So let's take a look at the opening hours. And now I've got 56 elements. It is a lot. And it entails that at some point, we will have to combine all of these items into a single cell. We will have to merge them. Well, I've got my XPath, I come back to Octopus, and I'm going to create another loop. A loop in a loop. Loop. I add a one second timeout and I select variable list as a loop mode. I insert my XPath here. Let's see if it worked. It worked. We have 14 items. And once I'm here, I'm going to extract data, of course. And I keep extract data in the loop checked this time. I add custom field, capture data on the page. And I do not insert any XPath, but I keep checked relative XPath to the loop item. I click on confirm and I've got 14 lines of data. If I want to merge them, I click on more and merge field data. So all of these data rows will be merged into a single one. And that's it. I think we can run our task. I click on standard mode and I see you back once it's over. I said we can get up to 120 data rows and we got 120 data rows. I can export it in a CSV or Excel format. And here is what it should look like. This is the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If it's the case, you can give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to scrape Google Maps in an easier way, you can take a look at scrap.io. I work with them and to my mind, it is the best Google Maps web scraping tool on the market. So the link remains in the description. See you next time.